Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of my virginity, I mean, vintage Mac collection. I'll be honest, this time, the Macs that will be featured in this video aren't that interesting nor that old. But, this time, I have way more vintage Mac accessories that I want to show off. Those will be at the end of the video, but for now, let's take a look at the 5 Macs first. Let's get right into it. In the order I received them since the last video, first up is my 2005 iMac G5 20 inch. And it's running Mac OS X 10.5 Leopard. I got it from my local college's surplus store. If you have a college in your town, I highly suggest checking out if they have a surplus store. Because I got this working iMac G5 for only $25. This was the last mostly plastic iMac Apple released before going full aluminum. I'll be honest, I like the look of plastic better than aluminum for my vintage Macs, but I prefer aluminum for the Macs I actually use daily. I remember using this exact model in middle school and discovered that these things are dangerous. Just look what happened when I got bored in middle school. Look at that cut. Imagine if that was your finger. Dangerous. Next up is my 2008 iMac 24 inch. I also got it at my local college's surplus store for $15. Why is it so cheap? Well, because it doesn't work. I would prefer for all my vintage Macs to be fully working, but for that cheap, I really don't care. Also, I doubt I'll be using any of my vintage Macs much for actual work and will just be displaying them. So I really don't care if they work or not. The surplus store said it won't boot and they took out the hard drive. And when I try to turn it on, it only does this. Yep, that's it. Here's my attempt to fix it. Looking good. And when I plugged in a keyboard and pressed eject, this came out. A homemade 10.7 line disc. Looks like they tried. Next up is my 2009 unibody plastic MacBook. Once again, I got it at my local college's surplus store for $75. I'm pretty sure this was the last mostly plastic laptop and one of the last mostly plastic computers Apple released. The surplus store also updated it to the newest OS possible, Mac OS 10.13 High Sierra, which surprisingly this laptop supports. So, I don't know if I can call this vintage. Apple does though. It is pretty slow running the newest Mac OS, but it is expected when it has an old spinning hard drive and only 2 gigabytes of RAM. I do love the rounded design of it though, but I hate how Apple decided to make the whole bottom of the laptop rubber. So the entire bottom gets dirtier and dirtier over time. The bottom of this MacBook was also infamous for randomly warping. Also, when I got it, it was covered in the college's stickers. I nearly killed myself! Not by accident. Trying to get them off with rubbing alcohol and a metal scraper, which I accidentally deep scratched the MacBook with. That event inspired me to buy some WD-40, which I didn't know it was something I desperately needed in my life. Next to last will be Another Power Mac G5? Nope, it's a 2007 Mac 
Pro. It is very similar looking to the Power Mac G5, which was why I was hesitant to buy it for $75. And what a surprise that, again, I got at my local college's surplus store. Wow! I'm pretty sure they don't like me there. All the computers there are wiped before they are sold, and this one is no exception. It is running Mac OS X 10.5 Leopard, and I haven't set it up yet just because I'd like to watch the Leopard welcome video every time it boots. Fine, let's set it up. Done. Moving on. And finally, this time not from my local college campus surplus store, <coughs> my 1999 Power Mac G4. Which is my new, oldest Mac. Also, uh, I hate this hobby, uh, another Power Mac G4. This one's from 2001. They are both running Mac OS X 10.1 Puma, and I got them both from Savers for the low, low price of only $7 each. Which is why I bought both, despite them being very similar to each other. One difference that I hate on the 1999 model is that it only outputs through VGA! And I'm too proud to buy a non-Apple branded monitor that supports VGA. The only way I can show this thing booting up is to use the TV in my parents' room, cause it's the only thing in this house that supports VGA. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this computer. Thankfully, the other one has a DVI input. So, it goes nicely with my studio display. Okay, loud? So I'm definitely a bigger fan of this one and not this one as much. I looked through both of them, and it turns out that both of these were from the college I got the other Macs from. How convenient to the reoccurring theme of this video. I googled the username on the computer, and it was used by a professor at that college. The 2001 model has photos on the hard drive showing that it was used up until 2010. Judging by his history, looks like he tried to upgrade in 2010. And that does it for the Mac computers! Now, let's take a look at some vintage Mac accessories! iMac G3 Bondi Blue Keyboard I bought it from a local thrift shop for $3 when I saw it sitting in the work area and I begged them to sell it to me. Now, I just need a Bondi Blue iMac G3 and a Puck Mouse to go with it. Mac box set I got at Savers. It includes iWork 09, iLife 09, and Mac OS X Snow Leopard. Good deal for $5. Magic Keyboard I got at Savers for $3. Don't get too excited now. It was missing two keys and the battery cover. I tested it with parts from my own Magic Keyboard, and it works. So it makes a nice backup, you know, just in case. I got it mostly just because it came with the original box. An old Apple remote. Apple included these with several older iMacs and MacBooks, so that's why I wanted it for the collection. It was from Goodwill for a dollar, and it still works with the battery it came with. An older Airport Extreme! I may have taken it too far when I said I wanted anything with the Apple logo for my collection. I got it from an offer up seller, but this wasn't the thing I went to him for. While he was searching for the thing I wanted to buy, I brought up that I wanted anything with an Apple logo on it, and he asked me if I wanted this for $15, which I talked him down to $10 for. Hell yeah! Probably never gonna use it. Speaking of that offer up seller, I originally went to him to buy some 
iBook install discs. He wanted $10 for these, but I talked him down to $4. When I got there, he took forever to find them. And I was waiting outside his house while it was really cold. He couldn't find them, so he told me he would just give them to me for free when he does. And he did! This is everything that was inside this ragged sleeve. What iBook did these discs come with? Does anybody know? Let's put some of these discs inside of a newer Apple laptop and see what happens. World Book Macintosh Edition. I think the disk drive on this MacBook is broken. Thanks, College Surplus Store! This is my 2011 MacBook Pro, which used to be my daily driver, and it's also running High Sierra. Looks like it will come in use once again. World Book. World Book! World Book! World Book! Alright, it's on the desktop. There's a user guide. Ooh, very 90s or early 2000s. Can we open up the World Book installer? You can't open the application World Book installer because the classic environment is no longer supported. Damn. Eject. How about Apple Care Protection Plan? What does the CD do? I don't know. Huh. Bunch of stuff in here. I don't know what to click on. Disk First Aid? Classic environment is no longer supported. And finally, let's try the iBook software install. Installing Mac OS 9 PDF. Ooh. Beautiful. Mac OS install. <laughs> Classic environment is no longer supported. <laughs> and that does it for this episode of My Vintage Mac Collection. This video has gone on for way too long, so I'm gonna end it now. Thank you guys for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned for episode 3! Which I know will happen, because my new addiction is now in control of my vlog channel. Bye. But, before I go, I want to give a quick tour of my office, now that I have my new Vintage Max on display. Alright, entering the office, first you'll see the iMac G4 on top of the Power Mac G4 Quicksilver. Little thing right there, hi. Then next to it, on top of the table, you see a stack of MacBooks with some uh, books on top of it. <laughs> and then next to that, we have one of the original Power Mac G4s with a Dyson Supreme on top of it. Then moving right along right here, this is a Power Mac G5 and on top of it is an iMac G5. Little nod to the show I like. And then next to that, next to each other, is the Mac Pro, and on top of it is the non-working iMac, and yeah. Then next to that is a little desk stand, which is a Power Mac G4, and just some cups. <laughs> Gotta support the show more, and yeah, I just like to put some of these Macs to good use. So yeah, I think that concludes the end of- wait, what the- when did I get an Xbox? Game is it? <laughs> oh.